We live in a world where there are lots of influences around us, people, places. Because we were the ones who wanted to come here. I think I've told you the story about the nurse who was a victim of a lot of gossip in her, in her workplace. One day when she was feeling especially oppressed by all this, she came to meditate with John Fung and had this vision in her meditation, being in a hall of mirrors, looking in one direction, seeing herself reflected back, 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 back. Looking in the other direction, seeing herself reflected back, 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 back. And it hit her that she'd probably been the victim of this sort of stuff for many, many lifetimes. It made her feel even more impressed. So after she left meditation, she talked to John Fung about this, hoping that she'd get some comfort from him. He said, well, you were the one who would want to be born as a human being. It's like a slap in the face. But that's the case. Each of us wanted to be here, whether we knew it or not. We created the causes. The opportunity came, and here we are. We wanted to get into this world, and then we found out that it wasn't quite what we thought it was. We didn't look at the fine print. So what are you going to do? A lot of times we can think of better worlds where we'd like to go. And if you create the causes, you go there. But there are going to be problems in those worlds, too. Think about that reflection we have so often, subject to aging, subject to illness, subject to death, separation, an heir to my karma. And in the suttas, the Buddha doesn't have you stop the reflection there. Think that all beings are subject to aging, subject to illness, subject to death. Subject to separation, they're the heirs of their karma. In other words, you look in the whole universe and all the many different levels, and there's no really safe place. Now, sometimes when we think that, then we go off in the other direction. We want to obl obliterate ourselves. But it turns out that sends you to another place in the universe, which also is not safe. So what are you going to do? Well, the Buddha offers a path that's the middle way between just looking for another place to go and trying to obliterate yourself. And the heart of the path is learning how to be right here. And look at things not in terms of being a person or being obliterated, but just the awareness of the breath here in the body. And for the time being, while you're here, any other thoughts are irrelevant. And John Lee makes the distinction between being with the Dharma, being with the world. Any thought that you can recognize, okay, this is me at this point in time in this location, with this world, with this past, with this possible future. Those are all thoughts of the world, and you want to replace them with thoughts of the Dharma. In other words, thoughts of being mindful and being alert, being ardent here in the practice, staying with the breath. Get really interested in the breath, of the fact that you've got this breath here, right here, right now. This is why when we practice mindfulness, it's the body in and of itself without any reference to the world. So what have you got here? You've got the sensation of the body sitting here, the body that you feel it from within. Try to inhabit it fully. This is your place. It may have been invaded in the past, but you can reclaim it. And if there are certain parts of the body that you feel uncomfortable with, find the ones that you are comfortable with. Sometimes there's a lot of tension in the torso, in the chest, or in the stomach, which tends to be related to a lot of emotional stuff. 
Get away from there for a while. Go to the hands and the feet. Allow the back, back of each hand to relax. Allow the, allow the top of each foot to relax. Think of the blood flowing there and filling all the blood vessels. And then as those parts of the body get full, then think of that sense of fullness creeping up the arms, creeping up the legs, working their way back into the center. Or you can think of your head. The muscles of the head are often used as markers for our thoughts. But just be sensitive to where do you feel the blood flowing in your head right now? How is it flowing around the eyes? Does it feel good around the eyes? How about in the ears, in your cheeks, in your jaw, down around all the teeth? Just be with the head in and of itself. And allow the hands and the feet and the head all to connect. And learn how to be present with this. The expression, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world, it means any thought that's going to pull you out of this, where you think about yourself being in this world, and you're inhabiting the present like this without any thoughts of, with reference to the world. You got closer to the, where the Buddha was on the night of his awakening. You will hear about how he awakened to dependent co-rising, and it sounds awfully complex. But he was describing what it's like to be here, and how things happen when you don't put things in the context of the world, or don't put things in the context of who you are right now. But just see, there are these processes that are going, and some of them lead to suffering and some of them lead away. You don't want the suffering. It is okay to have some preferences here. If you didn't have preferences, you wouldn't be meditating. But you want to look at these things as processes. Get out of the stories. And you can see there's the breath, there's the thoughts around the breath, there are the perceptions around the breath. And keep everything at that level as much as you can. And you'll begin to see how thoughts of worlds come up and thoughts of who you are come up. But instead of making them the context, you make this sense of just being right here, aware right here. This is the context. And that way the thoughts about who you are and the world that you inhabit, or the worlds that you might inhabit, they're like little bubbles. As long as you don't get into the bubble, you can be bigger than they are. You can stand outside them. And there's sometimes some thought bubbles come up and you realize, okay, these are things I have to be responsible for, these are things I have to think about. Then the next question is, is this the proper time and place? Are you sitting here meditating? No. Or at least not now. You might save it to the very last part of the meditation. It's something really important you've got to contemplate in your life. Put it at the end of the meditation period. But allow the mind to have its time to be in this, this other zone. The zone where you're not in a world, where you're not in yourself. You're here, right here, present in the body. The Thai Johns talk about this a lot. They say, well, you're sitting here like this. Are you a woman? Are you a man? Well, that's irrelevant right now. Whatever is irrelevant to the breath, let it go. Any part of your identity that's irrelevant to what you're doing right here, right now, let that go. Just let it pass, pass, pass. Do you want to establish this as your default mode, this as your, your context? So you can see these processes are becoming as they happen. And you can see how the mind gets into them, takes them on, like putting on a suit of clothes. But you also realize that you don't have to. There is a skill in not taking these things on. In fact, it's one of the first skills you want to learn as you meditate. It's like when they teach Thai boxing, the very first skill they teach you is how to retreat, how to back out of a clinch, 
how to back away from your opponent without exposing yourself. In other words, backing away in a way that you're protected. Well, this mode here of just being here with the breath, inhabiting your body in the present moment. That's how you back up. That's how you keep yourself protected. You want to be on familiar terms with this space. You want to be at home here. So it really does become your space. In that way, any other influence that may come past doesn't get a chance to come in. You don't get carried away by thought worlds. You don't get carried away by all the bubbles that the mind blows or other people blow past you. And John Cha has a nice image. He says it's like being in a house where there's one chair, and you're sitting in the chair. Other things may come in. People may come in and go out, but as long as you're sitting in the chair, you're the only one who gets to sit down. Everybody else has to stand. People don't like standing, so after a while they leave. You're in a position of strength when you're here. And when you're here, the issues of the world get small. Yes, issues of the past, all your narratives, they get small as well. You can be bigger than there. So this is why when we practice concentration, we try to fill the body with our awareness, fill the body with breath. It's hard to be sensitive to any peculiar habits you may have about what you do when you breathe in or what you do when you breathe out. One of the big mistakes we make as we work with the breath is that we have some cartoon ideas of what you should be feeling or what we should be feeling as the breath comes in, what we should be feeling as the breath goes out, and we create those feelings and add a lot of unnecessary tension. So think of the breath as not disturbing anything at all, just nourishing things, nourishing things, but not disturbing. This is your space. Try to make it your home. This way you have a home wherever you go. And keep remember remembering that while you're here, this is the middle path. This is the middle way. And where do you go from here? You just go deeper and deeper in here, more and more solidly in here. This is this place where everything you're going to need to know, everything you're going to want to know is going to appear, if you look carefully enough. So get as familiar with this area as you can. We don't get away from the world by running outside the world. We come in. Because we find out that all the worlds we inhabited in the past, they've all come from in here. So you want to get to know this spot really well to figure out what's going on. See things as they've come to be, and don't make anything more out of them. <laughs>